Hi, I'm Justin Campbell-White from the University of Dundee, and in this video I'll be introducing the StarMelt Python package for analysing emission lines in astronomical spectra. So StarMelt is for stellar accretion mapping using emission line tomography. I'll begin the video with a brief introduction about what StarMelt was designed to do, followed by a demonstration of the package functions. And whilst designed for stellar accretion mapping, StarMap has a broad range of applications for all kinds of emission line analysis. In my postdoc project at Dundee, we're focusing on stellar accretion, which is the final stage of formation for pre-main sequence stars. This accretion process governs the transport of matter and angular momentum from the protoplanetary disk to the star. And it's a volatile process that affects both the stellar and the planetary system's future existence on the main sequence. We're interested in statistically analysing accretion across a large sample of stars uh, for different masses and disk types. Using high resolution spectroscopy, we're able to probe the inner part of the accretion disk. It's well documented that pre-main sequence stars contain a wealth of metallic emission lines. This is due to high temperatures and shocks associated with the accretion columns and boundary layers as the material feeds onto the surface of the star. Using the high resolution spectral data, we're able to track the Doppler signatures of rotation across multiple lines to determine disk profiles. We can also use velocity signatures to detect uh, the early stages of planetary formation as the radial velocity contributions from planets affect the line profiles and the emission lines. For lines with different properties and profiles, we can determine where in disk they originated from. We can also use modulation of the line profiles to determine the latitude of the accretion columns on the star. We've carried out such a mission line tomography for a few stars now, and as I said, we're looking to conduct this statistically for a large number of stars. We have an observing proposal accepted at ESO to gather new data to complement the existing archival data for these young stars. We also have new data available soon from the HST program Ulysses, which will be taking ultraviolet spectra of many young stars, as well as conducting an ongoing monitoring program of four T Tauri stars. We're part of the collaboration Odysseus, which will be uh, analysing these data, and also the ESO large program Penelope, which will observe the HST target simultaneously from the ground using ESO instruments. So this will cover the uh, range from near infrared through to near ultraviolet. And the challenge here is clearly, how can we go from these high resolution data to the maps of the accretion? Um, and how can we do this lots of times for lots of data? And this is where StarMelt comes in. So it's designed to carry out as much of the identification and fitting of the lines automatically as possible. And if your research requires identification of emission lines, then StarMelt might be useful for you as well. StarMelt will be publicly available at the end of my postdoc project at Dundee as a package that you can download from pip or github and you'll be able to import it along with the other documented packages that StarMelt utilizes. StarMelt contains uh, modules and functions that can be used scripted or in IPython but to take advantage of some of the great interactive features uh, such as widgets and QGrid uh, we've been developing uh, the main flow using Jupyter Notebooks. We've included many convenience functions uh, for the spectra, such as being able to select and obtain the necessary flux and wavelength data directly from the FITS files that you've downloaded locally on your machine. Once you've selected a star, StarMelt can query Simbad to determine the spectral type of the star, and then select the closest standard or template spectra from the package library. And this lets you determine the radial velocity and rotational velocities of your target star using uh, standard cross correlations. We then have the option to select which spectroscopic instrument uh, we want to analyze the data for. And in this example, we just have data available from Theros, but if there were more, you'd be able to select it here. StarMelt can read in the data from all of the ESO instruments uh, using data from the ESO Science Archive. Uh, it also handles reduced FITS files from many other high-resolution instruments, uh, such as Espadons or SOPHIE. Once StarMelt has read in all of the data, it uses pandas to construct a data frame of all of the observations uh, for the spectral observations across your different dates, and determines the mean and median average spectra as well. 
And most of the star melt functions have the option to display plots or outputs of what the function actually does, as you see here. Further convenient functions include uh, plotting velocity distributions around the given line. Uh, you can specify what that velocity range is, and you, this accounts for the radial velocity of the star, which is calculated by the package but uh, isn't shown here. Uh, for this oxygen line, for example, you can actually see the velocity variations across the observations from the peaks of these lines. But uh, probably the most useful feature of SARML is being able to automatically identify and match all of the emission lines for a given spectrum. Again, this doesn't have to be stellar spectrum. Uh, in our case, it is, and we're using uh, a database that's constructed from the NIST uh, atomic line database as our reference. Uh, but you can provide any a reference line, uh, any reference list of lines you like to star mail that will match your lines to. So here you see a subsection of the ferrous spectrum, and all of the emission lines above a given signal limit have been automatically identified. So the blue points there indicate an identified line, uh, but the green points are those identified lines that have then been matched by their wavelength to the NIST database, in this case, to the reference database. Uh, so this also accounts for the radial velocity of the star. You can use this slider here to change the sigma limit of the threshold and the plot updates with the corresponding number of lines identified. And then if we select the full wavelength range and rerun this identification, we now have all of the lines from the spectra that are matched to the NIST database for this star, for this observation. So this can be repeated for, for any observation you like, for any star you like. Uh, we can now display this data frame of your match lines, in this case interactively using the QGrid package. So this includes all of the properties from the database for each of the lines, uh, some of which are going to be important for our analysis, such as the energy of the levels and the transition probabilities. We can use this interactive QGrid to filter the data frame um, by the elements that we're interested in fitting. So in this case, we'll pick the I and 1 and 2 lines. And next, you have the option to decide which observations you'd like to fit. So you can select multiple dates here if you want to fit more than one and then compare the velocity modulations of the line or fit periodograms. And uh, this would be useful, for example, investigating the contribution from uh, forming planets on, on the line, both in emission and absorption. Uh, you can also select one of the average fits to investigate the average properties of the lines across all of the observations, so that's what we'll do here. And next is the star melt fitting routine, and this lets you fit one or more Gaussians plus a uh, continuum contribution to each one of your selected lines for each of the dates you selected. And you can see here that a large number of the iron 1 and 2 lines have been fitted uh, with one Gaussian plus that constant continuum component. We have a, an adapted chi-squared goodness of fit measure that can be toggled on or off and then only return the lines that are well fitted. And you also have the properties of the lines displayed, such as the integrated flux, the signal to noise, uh, the central position of the lines. Uh, all of these steps in StarMail, by the way, um, is all stored in data frames along the way which can be saved for future use and further analysis, or in using a Jupyter notebook, you can just save the whole notebook and come back to it. And all of the refinements and filtering that we've been doing interactively here, you can also do programmatically using the standard Python scripting, um, if you did prefer. So one of the example physical calculations I can show you here is with lines originating from the same upper energy level. And we can use the Sobolev large velocity gradient approximation. I won't go into all the details of this equation, but essentially you take the lines from the same upper energy level and compare the observed line ratios that you get from the data to the theoretical line ratios that you calculate with this equation. So this uses the uh, transition properties from the NIST database for those lines. You then obtain plots to show the observed line ratios for the given pair of lines as this blue horizontal line, and the curves are the lines of constant densities for different temperature ranges on the left, and on the right lines of constant temperature for their corresponding density ranges. And by doing this for multiple lines, you can find out where the intersections are, and this allows us to determine best fit regions for the temperature and densities of this emitting materials. 
There are further features of StarMelt that aren't shown in this short demonstration. Uh, this includes subtracting the continuum and the photospheric contributions from either the whole spectra or individual lines, respectively. Uh, further physical investigations, such as using the Saha and Boltzmann equations for lines originating from different levels and ionization states, and further looking into those temporal evolutions using periodograms for the line profiles. And when StarMelt is publicly released, all of this information will be provided in documentation and we'll be giving examples uh, for each of the different functions. So in summary, StarMelt allows us to automatically identify and analyze emission lines from all kinds of astronomical spectra that contain these lines. In the case of accretion dynamics for young stars, being able to obtain these physical properties for different lines and see how they change across the observations uh, is what allows us to build up these tomographic maps of different stars, which we'll be in investigating in much more detail over the coming years. The first star mail publication is in prep, where we're going to look at archival data and explain the uses of the package, and we'll then be using them uh, with our collaborators for the wealth of new data that we expect to receive in the next few years. And we're really interested in the other potential applications of StarMelt that you may want to use it for. Uh, some potential projects that we're discussing are analysing uh, the effect of protoplanets on the line profiles during the accretion stage, um, analysing the emissions from cataclysmic binaries, and even using StarMelt for completely different sources such as active galactic nuclei and cometary comas. Uh, if you're interested in trying StarMelt for your data before its public release, please contact me for further information. And thank you for watching.